I'm um, just going to look at some of the sightings that have been, you know, there's a lot of news around the sightings. So if we start looking at the Scotland one with Ross Ford and Johnny Gray, um, I think to have them three week bans very harsh. I, I don't think you can class that as a tackle. Um, it's a clean out. Um, I think Jet Lamb, as the referee says in his, his email report, his head was already below his, his hips um, because he was jackling a ball. And it's an unfortunate incident where two guys have gone to clear him at the same time, realise that they, they're not going to shift him, he's in a good position, he's dropped over the ball well, and you've got, to, you've, also, um, you've got to take his balance away, which means you've got to take a leg. And at the same time, they both happen to take the leg at the same time, and he, he ends up doing basically a forward roll um, forward. Penalty, yes, but is it, is it, was it ever meant as dangerous? or um, Probably not. Uh, it'd been very harsh if he yellow carded both of them on the field, and especially when the referee says he's seen it and he was happy with his decision. I think it's then very difficult to then go away and give them basically a, a four week ban and then add a week because they want to stamp it out of a game. So when Sean O'Brien punches someone in the gut, you don't want to stamp that out of a game. You're quite happy to have that in the game and just reduce it down. Obviously, theirs got reduced down as well. Um, but still, that's going to that's gonna happen in games all the time. It's just unfortunate that two people were doing the clear out at the same time. Um, that going on to Sean O'Brien, again, the first thing that jumps out is if you're adding a week for things that you want to eradicate out of the game, random punch, gut punching, is that not something you want out of the game? Yes, I agree with some people who've said that you need to look at uh, the, the people who are holding people back or holding legs on the floor or um, trying to stop people from getting in the game and, and people reacting. I do think you need to, to punish the, the guys who start it rather than just the guys who, who retaliate. But um, at the same time, just gently holding someone's hip and <laughs> taking one to, to the solar plex, I think is it's possibly longer than a one week ban. I thought, you know, realistically it'd be a low level sort of two to three week entry, but. Um, and then reduced to at least two, but maybe even more. Um, I think he's been lucky with just getting a week. Um, and then if you look at Tonga with uh, Paulo Nagomo and his tip tackle, I think if he if he holds on and he finishes the tackle and he puts Dan Carter down, I think he probably gets away with. Um, uh, he gets a, he'll he'll get away with it. it. Shouldn't be a yellow card if he if he looks after him just because he he sort of gives up on the tackle and lets. Uh, Dan Carter fall to the floor hard. I think that's what that's what gets him that entry level of, of four weeks. Again, they add a week um, to uh, they add a week to him because they want to stamp it out of the game. So, and then it, then again, it's mitigated down to three weeks. So he's a, he he would have missed the rest of the tournament should they um, should they have progressed through. But again, you know that's something I agree with because players have to learn that now you can't pick people's legs up and take them above the horizontal and not put them down. You, you're in control of them. It's always been the way. That's a player's issue to deal with. Um, same Marcella Bosch. Um, again, you compare this to uh, Polo's. He's um, he's in a full spear tackle. He's basically put him down on his head. Yet he's only ended up with one week. How how does that happen? You know, at the end of the day, landing on your head is possibly from how high you got him as well. Yeah, I, I agree that I think Marcelo, he held on to his legs and, and sort of tried to control the landing, but still he's landing flat on the top of his head. Um, so how does that end up at one week? How is that not a low level? And where is the week, where is the week to eradicate it out of the game? Surely it is exactly the same as the tackle before, yet he doesn't get that week and he ends up, instead of having three weeks, he ends up at a week. Where's the consistency in the in the in the in the judgment on that? And you know, if you look at Tuolangi, you know, the ban he got for being the aggressor with the ball, um, doing something he's done his whole career. Everyone who's ever played against him will say, you know, that when you're going into tackle, he's going to drop that shoulder and try and time it with putting his foot down to make him his base as strong as possible to bounce you off. You know that's coming, it's been part of his game, to then suddenly bring it in and say he can't do that and he intentionally right, lifted his knee to a tackler, I don't get at all. And then he gets a massive ban on the back of that. And you just look where the consistency, it seems to be that the only people who get added weeks are those tier, tier, tier two teams. I'm hoping that it's not a case of that. But when you look at the actual 
on paper what the evidence is, you think that there is probably a little bit of, uh, it, it doesn't look good, let's just say from that point of view. And I think, I think everyone's just talking about consistency in sightings and there has to be that. I think we do have to look at people who are trying to get people to react. I think that's definitely got to be in there. There is always in the sport that, that little bit of uh, sportsmanship, trying to push the boundaries, but you know, you've also got to look what's within that and then what is actually blatant and, and just looking to get a reaction off someone. Um, but that is my thoughts on that. Let me know what you think. The first and exclusive updates. Join now.